for today's lesson, we will be discussing about the percentiles under the normal curve. So this is just a continuation of our discussion about the areas under the normal curve. So this time we will be focusing with the percentiles. So let's recall first how to identify the area under the normal curve given the z-scores. So if you want to identify the area less than a particular z-score, then all you have to do is just to look at the z-table. Because the z-table that we're using gives us the area to the left of the z-score. If what you want is the area that is more than the given z-score, then all you have to do is to um, you can subtract it to 1, the area to the left of the z-score, subtract it to 1, or you can just convert it into its corresponding negative z-value or z-score. And if you want to identify um, area between the two z-scores, then all you have to do is just to um, subtract the area of the two z-scores. Now let's talk about percentiles. When we say percentiles, these are expressions of relative standing. It is the descriptive measure of the relationship of the measurement to the rest of the data. So again, when we talk about percentiles, we are talking about the relative standing. What is your position in the given set of data? Okay, or where are you located? So for example, you are in the 25th percentile. If you are in the 25th percentile, that means you are above 25% of the data. So that is your standing. Let's say you are in the 40th percentile. If you are in the 40th percentile, that means you are above 40% of the said data. So that is what we call as percentiles. Now, how is this related with the area? So let's say we want to identify the 50th percentile and the 85th percentile of the given set of data. So let's try to draw first the normal curve. So let's try it like that. And then uh, let's identify where is the 50th percentile. So since it's the 50th percentile, that means uh, it should be above 50% of the given data. So let's say it's here. This is the 50th percentile. So if you're in the 50th percentile, again, that means you are above 50% of the given data. Okay, so this area right here, this one is 50% of the whole data. And if you're in the 50th percentile, you are above this given data. Now, if you are in the 85th percentile, so let's draw again the curve. Something like that. 85th percentile. So let's say it's here. So in the 85th percentile, that means you are above 85% of the given data. So again, if you're in the 85th percentile, that means you are above 85% of the given data. Now, if you want to identify where are these given percentiles are located, then we have to identify what score will give us this 50th percentile and also this 85th percentile. Now, to identify the score, we can use the z-scores. But since what we have here is this portion, we know that if you're in the 50th percentile, you are above 50%. If you are in the 85th percentile, you are above 85%. This actually will give us also the area. Okay, so if we will convert this into decimal, so this is 0 0.5000, okay? This one now represents the area of this shaded region, okay? And this one, if we convert this into decimal, so that is 0 0.8500, again, this area or this value represents the area of this shaded region. Now, since you have the area, we can now identify the corresponding z-score. And if we know the z-score, we can actually identify what raw data or raw score will be at the 50th percentile and 85th percentile. So what we will do now is the reverse process. So you have the percentage. We convert it into decimal so that it represents the area of the shaded region. 
And then, we will convert it or we will identify the z-score that corresponds to this area. And from that, we will convert it into its corresponding raw data or raw score. But how are we going to convert our z-score into its corresponding raw data? So we will be using this formula. So to determine the score of a given data and given its z-score, the following formula may be used. So we have x equals z times the standard deviation plus the mean. This actually came from the formula for the z-score, which is x minus the mean all over the standard deviation. So you just have to manipulate this so that you will end up with this formula. So again, we will use this if we want to convert the given z-score into its corresponding raw data. This x value here will now give us the location of our percentiles. So let's try it with this example. In a given set of scores, the mean is 83.5 and the standard deviation is 5.6. What score corresponds to the 25th percentile? So what we have is the mean, we have the standard deviation, and we want to identify what score corresponds to the 25th percentile. So first thing that you have to do is to draw. So let's illustrate so that we know what are we trying to look for. So let's draw the normal curve. Now since it's 25th percentile, that means if you are in the 25th percentile, you are above 25% of the total scores. So let's identify. So let's say it's here. This is where the 25th percentile is. So here we have this one. So again, if you are in the 25th percentile, that means you are above 25% of all the scores. So this one right here. So you are above the, this given region. Now, we have to convert this into decimal so that uh, we converted it into area. So this one is 0 0.2500. Okay. After you converted this into area, we will now identify what z-score will give us the area of 0 0.25. Now, to do that, we have to go back to our z-table. So, let's try to go back to our z-table. So, our goal now is to identify what z-score will give us the area of 0 0.25. So, we have to look for our answer here in this set of uh, areas. So, let's find where is 0 0.25. So, you just have to look carefully where is 0 0.25. Okay. So here we have uh, 0 0.2514 and then we also have 0 0.2483. Now since we're not able to identify the exact value of 0 0.25, what we can do here is we can just look at the two closer values to our area or the one that we're trying to identify and then pick the one that is closer to the area that we want which is 0 0.25 so between the two 0 0.2483 and 0 0.2514 0 0.2514 is closer to the area that we want which is 0 0.25 so that means we will be considering this um, area right here again if it's not equal or if it's not the same as with the one that we're trying to identify you just have to identify which one is the closest value so here we know that uh, the area that is closest to the one that we want is 0 0.2514. Now next thing that you have to do is to identify the z-score that will give us this uh, area. So you just have to look at the z-score. So there, going to this one and also going up. Oops. Okay, so here. So we have... So we have this and also the other one is this one. So if we will combine the two, it's negative 0 0.67. So that is the z-score that will give us the area which is 0 0.2514, which is closest to the one that we need. So going back here, so we now have the z-score, which is negative 0 0.67. Now next thing that you have to do is to convert it into its uh, raw data or raw score. 
So x is equal to, so you have the formula, so z score times the standard deviation, which is 5.6, plus the mean, which is 83.5. And then solve this, so compute, so we will get 79.75. So this one now is the rough estimation of the score that corresponds to the 25th percentile. Okay, so that is how you identify uh, the score that will give you a particular per percentile. Let's have another example. Um, let's say the mean is 65.5 and the standard deviation is 4.3. So we have to identify... Uh, the score that corresponds to the 81st percentile. So you have to draw again. So let's draw 81st percentile. So this one is, let's say this is the 81st percentile. So here. And then, since you are in the 81st percentile, that means you are above 81% you are above 81% of the scores. So this one right here. Now we have to identify what score corresponds to the 81st percentile. So we convert this into decimal that is 0 0.8100. And then now let's identify the z-score. So let's identify the z-score that will give us the area of 0 0.8100. So you just have to identify where is 0 0.81 in this table. So here we have, okay. So again, you just have to identify which one is the closest value. So we have here uh, 0 0.8106. And then before that, we have uh, 0.8078. But obviously, 0 0.8106 is the closest value to 0.81 because it's just 0 0.0006 units away from it. So we will be considering this value. So the z-score that will give us this area is 0.88. Okay, so 0.88. So let's go back to our slide. So we have the z-score now, which is 0.88. Now after identifying the z-score, you can now uh, convert it. So x is equal to the z-score times the standard deviation plus the mean which is 65.5 and then compute so we should get a value of 69.28 so this is the score that corresponds to the 81st percentile and for our last example in a given set of scores the mean is 65.5 and the standard deviation is 4.3. What is the minimum score needed to belong to the top 5% of the data? So let's illustrate it again to visualize what is happening in this problem. So this is our normal curve. Since we want to identify the minimum score so that we belong to the top 5% of the data. So this one right here. So that particular score should be the minimum so that you are part of the top 5% of the scores. So this one. Now how are we going to identify the z-score from this one? Now as you notice, what we have here is area to the right of what particular z-score it is. So as you can see, uh, the shaded region here is um, on the right side of our z-score. And there are uh, different ways and we cannot just look for um, 0 0.0500 into our Z table because if you will look at the Z table, this will give us the area to the left. But since what we have here is area to the right, what you can do is you can subtract uh, the 5% from 100 so that we can get this one, the left side. So this side right here which is 95%. So this 95%, we can actually uh, look for this in our Z table and it will still give us uh, the Z score. So what we will do is uh, we convert this into decimal. So that is 0 0.95. 
So we will be using this because again, in our Z table, what we can see there is the area to the left. So now what we will do is we have to look at point nine five. So that is the one that we will look for here. So let's go to our Z table. So let's locate now where is point ninety five. So here there so as you can see we have here 0 0.9495 and then the other one is 0 0.9505 and as you notice both of them have the same distance from 0 0.95 okay both of them are 0 0.0005 units away from 0 0.95 so what we will do here is uh, we just have to get both of the z scores and then we will get their average so what are the two z scores so we have 1.6 1 1.64 1 and 1.65 so we will consider the two z scores so we have 1.64 and 1.65 and what we will do is we will get the average so how will you get the average you add and then divide by two so this is what you will do if in case um after looking at the z table you notice that there are the two datas or the two areas are both have the same distance from the area that you're looking for so get the average this is 1.645 and this is now the z-score that we're going to use so x is equal to so we have um, 1.645 times 4.3 plus the mean which is 65.5 so the value of x now that we have is 72.57 so this is now the minimum score needed so that you belong to the top 5% of the data. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the percentiles and how to locate them or how to locate the percentiles under the normal curve and see you next time.